Hey guys, uh, Zen Cop here, um, doing my third uh, video blog cast. Um, still trying to put the pieces together. Um, like I said, I'll probably do a few of these before I really dive into um, an actual um, podcast slash video blog. Um, I'm getting a little more comfortable just sort of talking and uh, putting words out with, you know, kind of minimal script and, uh, just kind of seeing how it turns out. But anyway, so if you're listening, thank you. Um, and, uh, I appreciate you being here. So the topic that, uh, I'm going to cover today, um, is going to be sort of a, uh, a wide, wide range look at, um, this career field and sort of the stages that we go through. Um, and, uh, for those of you who don't know me, um, I, uh, I'm in my 12th year of law enforcement. I'm currently assigned to my agency's, uh, investigations division as a detective. Uh, and I've been doing that for, um, it'll be four years this month, actually. Um, and so I've, I've, I had a variety of other assignments before that, um, but at this point in my career, I, I would consider myself to be um, sort of in the the middle to tail end group kind of in terms of um, just sort of on the job experience and training and and uh, I guess just sort of in the the mental category of, um, I guess, one of the, the more senior guys um, in the department. Um, of course, there's guys with with much more experience than me, but I'm kind of in that weird uh no man's land where you, uh, you kind of start to think about the sort of big picture and long-term aspirations of your career, which is kind of why I chose this topic. It kind of puts me in a, a neutral middle ground so I can hopefully, um, cover all three sort of stages while acknowledging where I am in my own, uh, journey throughout this career. And, um, as we approach, you know, the new year, uh, 2023, hopefully will be better than this year. And, uh, 2022 is in my opinion, better than 2021. I think we can all agree that 2020 was one of the worst ones yet, but as of late, um, I've been hearing a lot of people questioning their career choice. And also now more than ever, I'm, I'm hearing a lot of cops, truly considering other options. And there really aren't very many. Um, and that, you know, some people may say, well, yeah, there, there are tons of options and there really aren't. I mean, I understand like the literal answer is yes, there are other jobs out there and they are easily attainable. But the real question would be, could you walk away from this job and be fulfilled doing something else? And I think before anyone answers that question, it's important that you consider the reasons why you want to leave in the first place. And then more importantly, where are you in your career when those feelings or emotions become palpable? Um, when we sort of look at the whole grand scheme of, of, of the career, excuse me, and the uh, stages we go to, there are essentially three different worlds and it's not really an exact science in terms of, of experiences and on-the-job training, but you're going to enter these three different role, worlds of law enforcement um, with your own independent attitudes and outlooks. But everything is going to be pretty linear when it comes to the scenery along the way. Um, and the the first, I guess, world or stage is, is usually when you are young, uh, eager, you'll probably be the sharpest you'll ever be physically. You're going to be just pretty much dialed, excited. Um, you're smart enough and obviously strong enough to have completed an academy. You worked your way through a field training program and a probationary period. And as those years literally fly by, you find yourself becoming more confident in your decision-making, um, your level of understanding in terms of legality and the justice system becomes ironclad. Truth and justice truly exists in this world. And, you know, you're going to make a huge impact on your community. You've worked some uh, good cases. You've had some close calls. You know, you got a, you got an arrow in your cowboy hat. Um, 
but you haven't really developed any type of major work-related injuries or ailments. But even if you did, you're too young and dumb to fill out the paperwork, even if you knew it was an option at the time. Hint, hint to the newer generation if you're listening. But as the years go by, you start to consider your future and your agency and kind of what you want to do long term. Um, You look at collateral duties, advancing to specialized assignments. Um, Maybe you want to look at SWAT or you want to start making your presence known for certain, you know, canine. You pick it, right? You start doing role playing, you you write in your yearly evaluations, your aspirations, and you just sort of regurgitate that same generic verbiage from the year before. And then you maybe get some type of leadership role, whether it's corporal or FTO. Um, you know, it's just sort of par for the course, right? Um, but in that time period of your life and this career, things are good. It's stable, right? But as time goes on, repetition sets in. And the reality of the job becomes blatantly painful as the days start to pass very slowly. Time starts to move slower. Um, You look over at the trainee driving the car and they look about 12 years old. And, uh, you know, Nirvana is considered classic rock. The list goes on. And every Tuesday is just, it's not Friday, basically. And... You start to get a little jaded, a little angry. Um, You start to develop some some toxicity. And that's totally normal. But once you get to that level, you have entered the middle world. And that's what I refer to as sort of a law enforcement purgatory. It's a dangerous place to be. And it's dangerous because it's a great place to be negative. And negativity will thrive in middle world. Negativity is limitless in middle world. Um, The weather report would be cloudy with a 100% chance of negativity. You get the idea. Um, You start to get really mad when it comes to just doing the job that you once enjoyed. Um, You stop laughing at the jokes. You want to lose your mind when you walk into a store and some guy says, I didn't do it. And you want to just throw them across the room. Uh, The harsh reality of the justice system is now full scale. And it's a failure in your eyes. And you hear yourself uttering three magical words. And those words are, what's the point? Um, Yeah, It, it gets to that point where you have intimate knowledge of your beat. You're on a first name basis with some of the most horrible people in that zip code. And... At the same time, though, you develop a known reputation within your community and the criminal enterprise within that community. And it's just sort of a weird spot to be. Now, with all this experience comes the ability to become lackadaisical and not in tactics, I hope, but in attitude. And it becomes almost second nature for you to dismiss what would be good ideas. You You get upset when certain people get promoted or otherwise recognized. You talk about how much things suck, but you don't put any effort into changing them. And when people suggest effort and change or anything positive, you pretty much tell them they're dumb for thinking like that. And middle world can make an amazing cop turn into one of the most nastiest versions of themselves they will ever see. And how you choose to deal with it is entirely up to you. Now, In middle world, it's not entirely negative. There's good places to go when you are responsible for your own success. Um, If you can get a one-way ticket out of negative town within the first couple of years, middle world is where you will find your second wind. And the second wind can come in in many forms, but it generally comes in the form of promotion, um, patrol seniority, or a specialized assignment. It's kind of like, you know, when Mario eats that mushroom and he gets bigger, you get a pay bump, maybe a take-home ride, a better schedule. Um, but those are very rare exceptions, right? And then the reality of what you're now doing at the same time can open up more stress. It can open up more exposure. And as long as we make an attempt to stay positive, we we should be okay, but it's going to be very hard to um, to kind of go in reverse once you're once you're there and 
end world, that's that's the last world where you're going to work in. Um, it sounds scary, but it's really not. The, it's the easiest part. You're physically older. Um, you've never been smarter in your entire life. You hold some type of, of rank or title that is admirable, hopefully. Um, very little gets you amped up. Your blood pressure is pretty stable. You're calm. And uh, the calm attitude is a result of years of experience coupled with your your lack of care, um, which is a good thing. You know, don't don't consider it to be lackadaisical, but you've experienced enough to know exactly where the boundaries exist and where your personal boundaries exist. And that's very important to remember as time goes on. You are essentially in control uh, throughout your entire career, but in, in middle world, it's very easy to make yourself feel like you have zero control of the future, which for all of us... Um, we can control our own destinies, regardless of how we may feel in regards to that being impossible. But I guess the question for all of us to ask ourselves is when we got this job and we were so excited and we we hit the ground running and we said to ourselves, man, I would do this job for free. I said those words. I had friends who said those words, coworkers who said those words. I can't believe I get paid for this. I would do this job for free. And as the years went on, those words changed. And I started to say, man, we don't get paid enough for this shit. I don't get paid enough to do this job. This isn't worth it. I don't get paid enough money for the stress, the bullshit. And then... Those words change. And eventually you just hear yourself saying, I can't do this anymore. I can't do this job anymore. And how did we go from, I would do this job for free to, I can't do this job anymore. That's a large margin. So if we were trying to find a solution, if we were trying to find a, a way to address this, I, I would love to say I have the answer, but I don't. The answer is going to be different for every single person. For every single mind, that mind is going to have its own independent way of addressing issues and finding solutions on your own. Um, and sadly, we all know there are just some people who will never change. We all have them at work. We all have the guys who will complain about everything and they will bring everyone down with them. And it's their job to just make sure that everything sucks and they want everyone to know it. And they exist, but you don't have to be that way. You don't have to be that guy. Um, Fortunately, I think for the majority of us, we are willing to to commit time and energy into ensuring that we want to do this job for the right reasons. Now, that being said, if you're at the point where you're saying, I can't do this anymore, and you mean it, maybe it is time to start looking for other options. It's very scary because in the world of law enforcement, we get so comfortable with this job that we start to basically cancel out the realm of possibility in terms of career alternatives. It's almost like this this job, as much as we say it doesn't and it shouldn't, it sort of becomes part of our identity because it's a character trait. We we have certain skill sets that allow us to do this job. And that's kind of an interesting factor when you consider, you know, how long should I do this? How much how much energy do energy do I have in the reserve tank? And I guess my my takeaway um from this personally is, you know, I need to understand when I can't do this job anymore. And I'm the only one who can make that decision. So I appreciate you guys listening. Um, as usual, uh, thank you. And I am absolutely humbled if you are listening and even more humbled if this helps you. Um, you can find me on Instagram at the Zen cop, T H E Z E N C O P. I'm also on YouTube and you're here right now listening to it. The Zen cop, um, Thank you very much, and I hope to produce some um, some more content here in the future, and I hope the quality gets better. And, yeah, enjoy your Thanksgiving, guys. Thank you so much.